Our next presentation will be an overview of Asterated Gems and will be presented to us by Martin Steinbach. Please welcome Martin Steinbach. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have to thank the GIA very much to be invited here. It's a big honor. And um, I'm going to give you a small overview about all the gems which have a star. Um, you might not all wake up same like me, so I got a little funny slide at the beginning. What is a pure human? Big drug claw, thin, tired, worn out, alcoholized using drugs, having fleas, and so on. In the times of Google, Twitter, Facebook, Wikipedia, and more, well, it's a kind of book author, it's me. Uh, I consider myself one of the last dinosaurs, one of the last idiots to write a big 900 pages book about stars. <laughs> So, you're all professionals, but uh, I'd like to give you a little introduction to asterism. Um, asteria or aster is the Greek word for star, that's why I have the star stones, and it's going back until 2000 years to the old Greece. Asteria, asterios, astrion, ostradamos, uh, the words for this kind of star. Dionysus Perigitis, about one century before Christ, was the first who mentioned. Uh, a beautiful stone Asterios from the Palinus Mountains in Trasa in Greece. Pliny the Elder, which uh, did this very famous book, Historia Naturalis, 70, 37 different uh, books about uh, uh, the, the time in the Middle Ages. He was uh, the very uh, famous author about uh, this kind of stars, well into the modern times. You know, we have about 60 different gems which can show a star in epiasterism and in diasterism, and about 15 trapeze varieties of stars. The star formations, as you probably know, they're mostly four-rate stars or six-rate stars, but you also can have eight-rate, 12-rate, 18 or even 24-rate stars. 24 rays are mostly in diasterism, that means in transmitted light, because simply you cannot count this kind of rays on a small stone. Also, you have twin stars, double stars, you have networks of stars, you will see some pictures later. We are just at this theory in a moment. That's what I mentioned before. You have the, the stars in epiasterism. That means the light must come in a rectangular angle of 90 degrees on the surface of the stone. And you have it in diasterism. That means the light is going through the stone. The deposits, just briefly, are mostly secondary alluvial deposits, but also primary deposits are possible. And the sources, most important, is Sri Lanka. It's the island of stars, as you probably know. They have all the rare stars, they have all the common stars, they have all the blue, the very beautiful stars. And you got some other important countries like Brazil, India, Madagascar, Burma, Thailand, and Vietnam. Well, 20 minutes is pretty short. And again, you got about 60 different gems to show stars, but the trapeze varieties, so there's a lot to show. And I'd like to uh, start the presentation now. The rainbow of stars, ladies and gentlemen. Well, even I was young, and as a young gemologist, uh, I had uh, the stars, the fathers of gemology. I had the pleasure to meet them, which is Professor Edward Gubelin and Richard Tillidicote. So I think I was influenced a bit before to do all this, to go my way and make this book, because it took me more than 25 years to make this book. So. I was very grateful for all these uh, modern influences and so to learn all that. Well, we start with the commercial gems of the star. Star Ruby, you all know. The queen of stars, red, the color of passion, the color of love. Mostly they are from Myanmar, Burma, and from Sri Lanka. You can have some nice stars from Vietnam. And at the September fair last month, in, uh, last month in Hong Kong, I saw the first very beautiful star ruby from Mozambique, very rare, never published, bright red color. 
Well, this is India. It's a big source for star ruby. Normally, the qualities are pretty ugly. It's a, it's a brownish red color uh, from the Karnataka, Mysore province in southern India. But this one is pretty beautiful. It's really red red. And for an Indian star ruby, which is uh, accounting for about more than 50% of all the star rubies in the world, it's really a really nice stone. You have with them double star. That means uh, you have two centers of the star over here. And uh, normally the Vietnamese star rubies are very flat. So if you have a flat surface, it's not very sharp. It's a new important source. You have trapeze rubies, you probably know them. That means stars with a fixed segmentation. So no star reflected light, no star transmitted light, just a segmentation. This is from Mongshu in Burma. And uh, it's uh, mostly very small, so it's difficult to put them in jewelry. It's not like trapeze emeralds, which can make a lot of uh, beautiful jewelry pieces. Star Sapphire, the king of stars, blue, blue, transparent, translucent quality, also from Burma. Well, you have you find star sapphires in about 24 different countries. That's a lot, from Afghanistan until Zimbabwe, A to Z. And of course, the most beautiful ones are from Burma and from Sri Lanka. You have some in Madagascar. And again, more com other, co other countries which are not of the commercial quality. This is a black star sapphire, Bangka Cha, Chantaburi area in Thailand. PTCTB, pretty damn close to perfect. <laughs> um, it's normally you can have them calibrated sizes and they are not very expensive. But it's difficult to get a kind of perfect star, 14 carat, and it's kind of a black star of ours. You can have them with a golden star, golden stars of fires. From the Bunker Trail mining area, you can have green stars, star fires, of course. And you can have stars of fires with two stars. You see two different centers of stars from Myanmar making also nice jewelry, a pretty nice collector stones. Uh, it can happen a lot with a special corundum. Black stars of fire, two stars. So you have one polished surface, and you have these two centers of the stars. Same area, Bangka Cha in the southern Thailand and near the Cambodian border area. Well, you might try to count these stars. This is quite a huge star sapphire from Burma. And it got four stars. You have the primary star here, two, three, four. So you have four stars on one stone on one surface. That means they are crystals, they intergrown, they're grown together, and you polish the surface and you come to four stars. I think it's the only one known until today. Well, this is star sapphire 740 carats. It's as big as an American silver eagle dollar before. And it's uh, having a, quite a good star. But on the other hand, the surface is, uh, the dome is not very high. It's pretty flat. So the star is a little bit wishy-washy. It's not very sharp. 12 rate, ilmanite, hematite, hematite causing the stars. This kind of bunker char stars of fire. They even have two different colors. Trapeze sapphire, spectacular picture. Probably you know it, it's on the cover of Richard Hughes' uh, Trapeze book, a Ruby Sapphire book. This, this kind of pictures. Again, the fixed star segmentation in blue and white. Big stone, very beautiful. Well, President Eisenhower, who won the Second World War, he got this carved Lincoln bust in his hand. This is one of the so-called president heads carved in star sapphire from Australia, Anarchy Gemfields. And you have a, a four or five presidents uh, carved from this material, and they're all located in the Oval Office. So President Trump is probably seeing them every day or once in a while. Or, I think under the Reagan administration, they moved uh, from the Katsanian Foundation, who did this work. Grateful to my friend Michael Katsanian, they were moved to, to the Oval Office. 
spectacular picture. Star quartz is another one of the common gemstones. It's uh, very magical and there is a sphere which shown is kind of a light effect. Brazil, another source, honey color, star quartz. Well, amethyst is one of the very few stones which do not show, uh, not show a star in epi asterism, that means in reflected light. You got all the other colors in, in quartz, like citrine, like, uh, of course, colorless, like a rose quartz showing a star, but there is no star in amethyst. But we got this kind of uh, star in diasterism. It's a sphere, and you can see the six rate star here if you put the light trans trans transmission through this uh, kind of sphere. Very rare. Well, what I mentioned before, the 24 rays, you can try to count them. It's not easy. It's a squad, star quad sphere. And uh, in transmitted light, again, the light is moving through the stone, you see it is uh, 24 rays, or maybe 80 and 19, 20. And, uh, Well, star rose got the two stars. You got the one star here due to the reflection of inclusions near the surface of the sphere, and you got the second red star due to the reflection of the needles at the lower part of the sphere. That's why this one you have two stars. Well, this is one of my favorite pictures, actually, ladies and gentlemen. It's a star quartz sphere, sphere and you have a liquid inclusion inside the sphere, and on this liquid inclusion inside the sphere, you have a 12 rate star. It's unbelievable. You see, you can see it here, it's not easy to make, it's very difficult to make photos of stars, by the way. But it's, it's a liquid inclusion inside like a feather, or a healing crack inside the sphere, and on this sphere you have a 12 rate star. Well, we did a little bit in front of a candle, like you in old fashioned ways. The time is running out, so I got a little bit quicker. Star rose quartz, I call it kind of art. In star quartz, you can have beautiful star phenomena. The Garnet group, Almanet Garnet, showing stars. Star Garnet color change from my friend Thomas Heinschwang. Extremely beautiful picture, extremely rare star. The star Garnet with, with two colors like Alexandrite, red and green. It's, it's a very unique piece, extremely rare. Spessardite star garnet, colored of garnets, uh, very, very rare, showing this kind of star. You can see a little bit the root needles over here. Anodite star garnet, collection by Larsen. You probably know the picture, it's a famous picture, having this kind of a four rate star over here. I think it's a mathicode stone. Well, moving to the moonstone feldspars group. Um, it's Kangam in South India, having beautiful star formations, and uh, you've got four red stars, you've got eight red stars. And uh, even in Oregon, from the beloved uh, sunstone mines there, you can have a piece which has a kind of star. Again, the Autiklas Feldspot Moonstone, six red star. And eight red star. You can, this is a kind of a narrow star here, even they have two different colors. And you got another ray perpendicular to these. Star dioxide, South India, probably know. It's going to also be in green, pretty rare, Boma. Well, I mean, moving to the gems, very rare stars, these were the common ones before. Star aquamarine, star beryl, yellow mostly again. Uh, the star caused by hollow channels, for example, and these kind of pearls. Star bronzite, I call it the star butterfly, got an eight red star here, two different colors. Star hypersine from our neighbor, from the neighbor country, Canada, a lot of hypersine on the market. It's very difficult to get it with a quite decent star. Star calcite, very funny stone. It's a sphere, very inexpensive material but can show a quite nice four rate star. You see here the, the, ray, the, the rays of the, the angles of the star are rectangular, 90 degrees, as mostly with four rate stars. You can look for this kind of uh, spheres and you will find uh, even in different colors. The star kyanite, Nepal, India, the sources, four rate star. Chris Abrell, 
two different colors. Star Peridot, beautiful stone from Burma, from even Norway can show some stars. Pakistan, Peridots can show some star. So always four red. Shilites, the heavy ore, big stone, yellow star from Sri Lanka, the island of stars. Spinel, two colors. Happy to have a blue star. Spinel now is something like the most underrated star stone because you have a very sharp star all the time, you have a very decent color, you have a very nice surface of the stones, no nicks on me, and they're not so expensive, but they're very beautiful, also for jewelry. Now we move to the last part of this. It's a one of a kind gems with a star. That means uh, they do not have to be beautiful, but they're very rare. I don't know if somebody heard about the star Amazonite. I doubt it a bit. <laughs> Well, we cut the stone. I mean, we let it cut, and it shows a pretty nice uh, six-rate star over here. Small stone. Cordierite, dichorite, iolite, water sapphire, the gem of four names. Shows a big star, 199 carat, by the big, big stone. Starpartite, that's what I said before. They do not really are, be they are not really beautiful, right? but are very rare. And to my, my knowledge, they are the only one uh, which are known until today. And you got it with a four ray, and you got it with a six ray. Well, you might know this stone, a so-called star diamond. You have a star because of some imperfections in the symmetry of the oct octahedron. And Thomas Heinschwan made this picture. It's the Rhodesian star in uh, UV fluorescence light. That's why I got this kind of very spectacular picture. Star Emerald. You can have it four and six rate. It's mostly Santa Teresina in Brazil. It can be Madagascar. Econite. It's a radioactive material, big stone. We have to be, take care when you cut the material. <laughs> so this was a star canal with a six red star from Sri Lanka. Star Serendite, also the only known picture from Canada. Mount Saint Hilaire. The star is not very sharp, as you see that, but it's existing. Kunzite, very common stone. You can have very sharp Kunzite cat's eyes. Star is very rare. Uh, and you can have a four red star over here. Star Opal, it's from the GI lab in Bangkok. And uh, I call it the Bella Dancer. It's a kind of segmentation in, in, in the Opal, which is causing some kind of a six red star. Normally, of course, in Opal, you do not have stars. Star rhodochrosite, spectacular stone from the sweet home mine. It's really a very sweet stone. It's a very sweet color. The thing is, the stone is a sphere. It's a very small sphere, and it's having a very nice forward star. Again, to photograph stars is very difficult if the star is not very sharp. We are pretty good in this. I'm pretty proud about that. And again, it's, it's uh, from the sweet home mine. It's, uh, it's a fantastic stone, and it got its forward stars in this intense color. Star Tanzanite. If you talk about Tanzanite dealing companies, they have millions of dollars stock in, in Tanzanite cut and cover shown. Normally, they have never seen a Star Tanzanite. And this was examined by the SSF in Switzerland. And uh, so even Tanzanite can show some kind of stars. Topaz, sixth grade, very rare. Ukraine, big stone. And Zircon. It, uh, got an eight rate star. Normally in some stones, you have always in the direction of a C axis, you have a stronger ray than the other rays uh, which are crossing this kind of, of ray. Well, from Barbara, there was this beautiful presentation of tourmaline. So uh, I know I have such a complex stone. So this is the star of heavenly dreams. It's the only real, really nice existing star tourmaline until yet. I mean, there are some other ones 
published, but this is a really decent store. Got a Goblin certificate. It's very cool. Well, <clears throat> we got two new sources of stars. It's happened once in a while. You find some stones in some countries which are not yet published. This uh, star Roscot is from uh, China, Yangshu province. And this uh, star Almadad is from Russia. As you see, they're not really very beautiful. They are low quality to medium quality, whatever. But their new source was never published. I'm happy to present them here. Well, this is a list of stones which are not yet mentioned in this little presentation here. So you see you have a whole bunch of this, what I said before, about 60 different stones to the star. Well, there's a book, My Life Work. And there's the VIP edition of the book. <laughs> and at the end, this is exclusive editions. I went really wild to make uh, pictures from the book and make exclusive editions, just five each existing. I think I still think it's a, it's a great idea to do it. They're very rare. And thank you very much. The presentation is coming to an end. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I made it with the time. Almost, <laughs> almost. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. Do we have any questions for Martin, real quick? Yes, sir. No, not really. As I, said, as I mentioned on the star Roscoe sphere, you have reflection of the inclusion at the top of the dome and in the lower layer, different also in, in, uh, reflection. Also, also the star is possible. You have also double stars. That means you have a, a domed surface and a domed base possible. So you can trim the backside? Yeah, normally you can. It's a, it's a very, very good question because uh, it's happened a lot of times that uh, this question is going to be asked. <laughs> yes. Uh, were all the stars taken with a single light source? So even if there is a double star, the double star shows with a single light source? Yes, exactly, madam. Because, you know, the thing is, if you take two light sources, you have two stars. If you take four light sources, you have four stars, you know, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> you can see sometimes when we play with art, we're going to do it. But normally, it's only one light source having the two stars, of course. Okay, we better get going. And thank you very much, Martin. Thank you.